Okay, so we've been talking about electric fields and electric charges, and so we need to go over some of the important ideas about matter and electric charges. So let's just start with our very basic model of, a, of an object. So let's say this is a piece of aluminum or something like that. There's, it has both positives and negatives in there. If the total number of uh, positives is equal to the number of negatives, then it would be neutral. So we'd say Q equals zero, but it could really be like plus 10 minus 10, and that's equal to zero. So it does have charges in there, even though it's neutral. Uh, that's an important point. Now, how do you charge something? Normally, if we want to make something positive, it would be like this. And I, I drew the negatives as red, see? So if we want to make it positive, it just have more positives than negatives. And then here are the negatives. Let's say it only has like that. That's a positively charged thing. Normally, we are going to charge something positive by taking away the negative charges. And that's because the negative charges are the ones that are able to move. If you think about something like um, carbon, and you want to take a proton, the positive proton, out of carbon, that is not easy to do. And in fact, it's almost, I mean, you'd have to have a nuclear reaction in order to do that. So we're not going to do that. So it's a transfer of negative charges in most cases. Uh, so that would be positive. And if I have extra negative, so this is positive, Q equals positive. And then if I want to make it Q equals negative, I just add extra charges. And this could be, maybe this is an aluminum because I, I did that wrong. Okay. Okay, so now an important point about uh, insulators versus conductors. So insulators and conductors. In an insulator, electric charges really can't move around. They can't move around in the material. But in a conductor, electric charges are free to move. And this has one very important property. If I take a block of metal that's a conductor. So this would be things like metals, and this would be plastic, wood, and some things can be an insulator and then become a conductor. Air is a great example. Um, let's see, glass, metals. Okay. So if I have some excess positive charge on this, I'm just going to draw the excess charges, then these charges would have to be on the outside. The excess charges would be on the outside. Um, this makes an electric field of zero inside. So inside a metal, the electric field zero. And it has to be zero because if I do put, let's say, an extra negative charge in there and the electric field is not zero, it's going to move. And so it's going to move until it gets to the surface where it can't move anymore. And so electric fields inside of conductors have to be zero. I'm trying to think of other really important things about charges, and I don't really want, there's a whole bunch of stuff we could talk about, charging by induction, uh, I, I will, let's say this, how about this, interaction with a neutral object, that is important. So let's say I have this plastic pin, and it has an excess positive charge on it, and I bring it near a little piece of paper. The paper is neutral. Even though the paper is neutral, it does attract to the positive charge. And so what happens is what's called polarization. So I get this effect. So all the molecules inside the paper get polarized such that the electric field due to this plastic pin causes a separation of charge in the molecule, just even if it's slight. And then I have the positive charge over here attracting the negative charge more than the positives repel that because they're further away. So the net effect is to have it attracting. Uh, and this is why you can have a charge object interact with a neutral object through attraction only. Okay, I think that's enough really. Um, I want to do some more problems. and But we're going to come up with, we're going to talk about properties of matter more, uh, but we'll talk about them as they come up. Okay, so I'll see you guys later.